Welcome to Refilm, at a department store, everyone is going about their business. Someone is buying a soda, whereas others are just browsing through the aisles. Suddenly, a group of masked men enter the store, armed to the teeth with weapons. Soon after, the entire store is taken hostage, and the robbers start to shut everything down, and detain everyone who is inside, including a cop. Amidst this crisis, cops surround the building, as it turns into a chaotic hostage situation. Around the same time, a dispatch alert is raised, where the LAPD calls in their infamous SWAT team. SWAT Captain Frank Tate takes a call that says hostage alert. On receiving the call, he immediately asks his team to prepare, and sets off to the venue. The SWAT team members include the captain, SWAT Sergeant Tony Hunt, and SWAT officers Jannert, and Blanco. The LAPD SWAT team arrives at the scene, which is already brimming with cops. Captain Tate steps out of the truck, and places his rifle on the hood of a cop car. The cop tells the captain that they are handling the situation, to which he replies that the regular cop should take the rest of the day off now. He takes away the microphone from the cop, and asks to negotiate with the hostages. He tells the robbers, that he is required by the laws and procedures of his department, to reach terms of negotiation with the robbers, before deciding whether or not to move in, and denying this procedure would lead to the SWAT team beating them up, and putting them in jail. The leader promptly accepts the procedure, but just a mild delay in response is purposefully exploited by Captain Tate, as an excuse to take violent action. This leaves the mastermind robber in confusion and panic, as he tells his fellows to get ready for offense. The SWAT team moves in, and officers Blanco and Jannard take point, after Captain Tate asks everyone to split into three segments. Blanco grabs a frozen steak from the counter, as he and Jannard crouch behind the counter, to flank one of the robbers. In the meanwhile, Sergeant Hunt moves in separately, and intercepts a robber and a hostage. Upon the robber's demand, Hunt fakes a surrender. Tate, during all of this, intercepts the head of the robbers, as he and his policeman hostage are walking between the aisles. Tate drops his weapon, confusing the robber, and rams into him and the hostage, throwing them onto the stacked goods. Blanco throws the frozen steak at one of the robbers, who is dazed, and Jannard fires a few rounds and takes out the robber. Hunt surrenders all his weapons except Martha, his beloved BB gun, using it to hit the robber and stagger him, before picking up his rifle and killing him. Tate smashes the head of the robber into a refrigerator, and beats him up. All the robbers are neutralized, and the hostages are saved without any fatalities. This scene is followed by the SWAT team unwinding in their locker room, when Tate informs them that the chief of police wants to meet all of them. Expecting how they might possibly be honored for rescuing all the hostages, they all talk about how they would casually pretend to be pleasantly surprised, and would say that it was their honor to serve the people. However, when they do go to the chief's office the following day, they realize that the chief is anything but pleased with what happened. The chief tells them that they did not follow the standard procedure, and it resulted in the national food chain, where the incident occurred, suing the LAPD for a quarter million dollars. He complains about how their recklessness led to so many injured hostages, including the policeman, whose testicle burst as a result of Tate ramming him. After a few comical exchanges with the enraged chief, he tells them that they are all immediately suspended without pay, and must take retraining sessions with the feds. The SWAT team finds itself in a class, being taught by a boring instructor, who teaches them about a famous scenario, wherein a person took kindergartners hostage in 1998, and the situation was peacefully resolved through negotiations. However, each of the SWAT team members has a very harsh solution, with some sort of stress to hostage children. The instructor is baffled. The SWAT team jokes about the prospects of peacefully dealing with the situation, much to the annoyance of their instructor. In another scene, a pair of Russian mobsters Demetrius and Ilya, take a man named Kenny hostage, and ask him about a package that he had allegedly stolen from them. When he does not answer, they threaten to butcher him. Kenny tells them, that the Italians also know that the items are in the location where they are looking, and that he involved the Italians to ensure he had leverage. The SWAT team are on their way to the same warehouse, as it was booked by the LAPD for their retraining exercise. The Italians reach the spot too, and confront the Russian mobsters. The Italians are Lampone and Storto. The two groups argue about where the item is, and how Kenny played them both. But as they argue, they hear sirens of the SWAT team arriving. They decide to put their differences aside, and huddle up inside, to take out the SWAT if necessary, thinking Kenny had tipped them off. But as the SWAT team moves in, they immediately head upstairs. The criminals get confused and remain on guard. However, the cops are busy in their training, and their shooting further scares and alerts them. But as they continue to hide, a fight between Storto and Ilya breaks out, as Storto gropes her. The disturbance is noticed by Tate, 
who sends Blanco to investigate, and tell anyone who is inside, that the place is booked until 2 p.m. But as Blanco goes down, the criminals get nervous and kill him by shooting. This prompts an involuntary response, wherein Blanco fires his gun into the air, alerting his team. Tate decides they must head down, and see what is going on. The criminals realize that Blanco's rifle had blank rounds, meaning that the cops were effectively unarmed. However, having already killed Blanco, they find themselves trapped, and decide to collaborate and kill the police, and keep their slates clean. As Tate and his team come and confront them, they realize that their opponents know their guns have fake rounds. So, on Tate's sudden instruction, the cops retreat upstairs, closing a vaulted door behind them. This traps the criminals out, and Demetrius calls for backup. The Italians wait, as Russian backup arrives, and devise a plan to use a ladder to reach the upper floor from the outside, and intercept the cops. But, Tate and his team decide to move back, predicting that the criminals would try to flank them. They move back to the door, and use a gap to run to the truck, and get their real weapons. Jannert and Hunt man the door, and Tate runs for their supplies, realizing that their radio has been damaged. Jannert moves upstairs, to see what the Russians are up to, and Hunt maintains his guard. Inside the truck, Tate finds a tied-up Kenny, and releases him, thinking he is a hostage. However, he runs back to the vaulted door as the Russians move in. Jannert is pinned down by the head of Russian backup, but Tate comes in to rescue her, and kills the Russian. As this happens, the Russians realize their backup has been neutralized, and the Italians call in theirs. In this chaos, Kenny runs away, but Tate catches him inside the bathroom with a case. Tate looks at the contents, and realizes the gravity of the situation. He asks Kenny what the plan is, and Kenny leads them to an underground tunnel, that leads out of the warehouse. But as they move in, Tate decides to retreat for a bit, and see if they are being followed. The Italian backup realizes this, and their chief asks for two teams to enter the tunnel from either end. They intercept Tate and his team, and bring them out from each end. Tate is held by the Russians, and is asked about the case, he replies that he knows where it is, but wants them to let his team go. On the other side, the Italians think of taking Hunt and Jannert. Annoyed by Kenny, Lampone finally kills him, and asks that Hunt take Stordo to the case, as he holds Jannert hostage. He dispatches his backup team to dispose of all the Russians. As the Italian backup arrives, Tate offers support to the Russians, and drives off in their truck, starting a pursuit. Inside the tunnel, Hunt kills Stordo, and runs back out of the tunnel. Then, he sneaks up on Lampone and frees Jannert. Tate then smashes in with the truck, and another firefight begins. Hunt realizes that the truck has his personal grenade launcher hidden in it, and uses it to take out the Italian backup. He fires and blows up the entire van, engulfing it in flames. After this firefight ends, Demetrius sneaks up on the cops from behind, and takes them hostage, stealing the case. He then asks that the cops and Lampone get down on their knees, and orders Ilya to kill them. Ilya responds positively and accepts the honor. Demetrius moves out to smoke a cigarette, trusting Ilya to dispose of everyone, but he does not hear any gunshots. He goes back in, and sees that Ilya has been knocked out, and the head of the Italian backup is still alive. He and Lampone take cops, Ilya, and Demetrius hostage. In this new twist, Tate asks for one last favor before he and his team are killed, he asks that they be allowed to wear earplugs. Lampone grants this request, citing its absurdity. However, as soon as he and his team wear the earplugs, Tate drops a concealed flash grenade, disorienting everyone in the room. The Italian runs out in panic, and Lampone is instantly overpowered by the other two cops. Tate chases with a rifle, but both the big guys are out of ammo. So, a fist fight ensues, which Tate ends up winning. He subsequently returns, and he and his team take everyone else into custody. Then, they are seen in the chief's office again. This time though, the chief commends them for their efforts and heroism, honoring Blanco's sacrifice, and offering a parade in their honor. However, he raises one last concern, the SWAT team allegedly roughed up a Fed in the process. Kenny then comes into the room, explaining that he and Lampone were actually undercover agents, on a sting operation to secure the briefcase from the Russian and Italian mobs. Confused, the SWAT team accepts the twist, and soon find themselves back on regular duty. The contents of the briefcase forever remain a mystery.